Now, Executive Suites with WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. President Obama's emphatic re-election victory last November means his landmark Affordable Care Act is here to stay. Now Rhode Island officials are racing to get the state's new health insurance marketplace, HealthSource RI, up and running in time for an October 1st kickoff. One insurer that won't be selling through HealthSource RI in year one, Tufts Health Plan of Massachusetts. But that could change in 2015. And whether Obama's vision pans out or not, nearly everyone agrees on the need to rein in the ever-soaring cost of American medicine. This week on Executive Suite, Tufts Health Plan President and CEO James Roosevelt Jr. Welcome to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi. Jim, thanks for joining me this week. Great to be here. Uh, coming way down from Boston, taking a long trip into Rhode Island. Oh, so terribly long. We appreciate yeah, right. it. Um, I want to start with something, a really simple, basic question that people might wonder. Is Tufts Health Plan related to Tufts University and Tufts Medical Center? Well, there's a relationship, but it's not an ownership, uh, and it's not corporate. Uh, Tufts Health Plan was founded uh, in 1981 by a doctor who later became the dean of Tufts Medical School, but he was a professor there. And we continue to have close relationships, but as we're a very separate uh, company. Fortunately, we uh, are the carrier for the uh, faculty and staff at Tufts University. Uh, and my predecessor as president of Tufts Health Plan uh, has gone on to become the dean of Tufts Medical School. So there's relationships, but it's not uh, it's not the Tufts University run health plan or something like right. that. Right. Um, we're going to get into the details on the Affordable Care Act that I mentioned up at the top, but I want to start with a, a big picture question for you. You're constantly talking to your fellow insurance executives all over the country. You're working on implementation issues in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. Do you think the exchange model in the Affordable Care Act is going to work? We're looking at October 1st as a deadline. Do you think it, it's on track? So. I start my opinion with the fact that we've been working through the exchange in Massachusetts called the Commonwealth Health Connector for the last five years. And it has evolved over time. That, of course, created by former Governor Mitt Romney and, and the legislature. Created by Governor Mitt Romney and implemented by Governor Deval Patrick. Uh, and uh, it's been very successful uh, in bringing Massachusetts together with expansion of employer coverage, employer-based coverage. Uh, to uh, nearly 98 uh, percent of the residents of Massachusetts having health care coverage either through the exchange, through their employer, or through one of the government programs like Medicare and Medicaid. And to give people a sense at home, that's about a 2 percent uninsured rate in Mass. I think it's 11 or 12 percent here in Rhode Island. I think it's a little, it's getting, it's really close to 13 here oh, in Rhode there Island. There you go. Okay. Uh, uh, so there's a big difference. Uh, and part of that is the expansion of Medicaid that Massachusetts did. We might talk later about what's going to happen nationally uh, on that, but uh, part of that is the expansion of Medicaid. But the biggest growth actually uh, when universal coverage went in in Massachusetts was growth in employer-based coverage. Which will surprise people because the, some of the concern is that employers will say, I'll dump employees onto the exchange where they can get subsidies, but you haven't really seen that. What seemed to happen was that when people had alternatives and they could go employer could say you're on your own, but of course then people could go to the exchange, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and on the exchange they can very clearly see online or over the phone, but it's clearest online, uh, see what the cost of various choices in health insurance it, uh, is. Once you can see that cost, then you realize, well, you know what, it's worth it to pay my share of the employer-based coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, and employers saw as well. Well, we could drop coverage if uh, in Massachusetts it's a more, if you have 11 or more employees, you have to offer coverage. Uh, nationally, that's going to be 50 or more, and and, and Rhode Island's going to follow the national uh, rules. But uh, the employer then sees the employer employee knows. Well, but I actually need a raise of about eh, since it, since it would be after tax dollars probably three or four hundred dollars a month so that I can go get the insurance on my own. 
That's a whole different conversation between the employer and the employee. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, just so people at home, I'm trying to keep them in on the terminology. The exchange is the new marketplace being set up now in Rhode Island and nationally in each state. Massachusetts obviously already had one because of Governor Romney's uh, law. Um, so the Rhode Island exchange is called Health Source RI. We've just had the rollout for it here in the state. The Chafee administration very supportive, moving ahead with that. Um, Tufts isn't on the exchange in 2014, but the exchange director, Christine Ferguson, tells me she hopes you'll join in 2015. Why isn't Tufts uh, involved in the first year? In fact, we have committed uh, to Director Ferguson that we will be on the exchange in so that's 2015. Not, that's happening. That is happening. Uh, we worked closely with her and with uh, the other uh, state officials on helping to design uh, uh, the functioning of the exchange. We became convinced that we uh, could not offer a product of the quality we wanted to offer by January 1 of 2014. So we decided to wait a year, uh, have the lead time, knowing what the regulations will be in place. As you know, uh, three plans are being offered on the, uh, on the exchange. Uh, Blue three Cross, insurers. Three yeah. insurers, excuse me, a number of plans, but three insurers, that's right. Uh, uh, and Blue Cross is being offered to individuals as well as to small businesses, united only to small businesses, uh, and neighborhood uh, only to individuals, I, be uh, I believe. So uh, there will be an array of offerings. We think we will bring a fresh approach on January 1 of 2015. And when you look, uh, there's actually, in some ways, there's two exchanges. There's the marketplace for individuals, as you mentioned, and the shop exchange, it's sometimes called the small business marketplace. Could you see Tufts putting plans into both, or do you think you'll just focus on one part of the market? I definitely could see Tufts on both. Uh, again, we'll have to work with the exchange. Uh, they're a little busy right now, so <laughs> after the first of the year, when, uh, when this first year is up and running, we'll definitely have to work with the exchange to see what is the greatest need in the market. And as you watch, um, you know, the exchange has become kind of a black box for a lot of us. And I know I've talked to my colleagues, reporters in other parts of the country, just because so much of it is, is technology, so much of it is regulations we haven't seen yet. When you uh, talk to officials in Rhode Island, how's the process going, do you feel like, to get the exchange ready for enrollment to start October 1st? And, and are they making the kinds of choices you saw that worked in Massachusetts? My impression is yes, they are making the choices that will work. But like any brand new thing that you roll out, there's an awful lot to work through. Uh, in Massachusetts, it's been very successful in the offerings uh, to individuals. Now, we actually would favor even a little more flexibility in the design of the various insurance plans than we've had in Massachusetts. But it's still been very successful with individuals. Hasn't been so successful in small business uh, offerings in Massachusetts. On the other hand, that could be because of the array of small business offerings there are outside the exchange. Mm -hmm. So how that will work in Rhode Island remains to be seen because if there is a, a, a greater array of good choices in the exchange, that could be more successful from day one in and Rhode Island. And that goes to actually a, a big, a key difference between, there are many differences between Massachusetts and Rhode Island, but one of them is we only have four insurers. We added Tufts came in 2009, making it four. Uh, Massachusetts, there's a, there's a much longer list of different insurers offering plans, both the private marketplace through the exchange. Um, how much does that matter? And are you concerned, I guess, that it could the exchange could end up being, some people have said, uh, just Blue Cross's marketplace in Rhode Island because Blue Cross is so dominant here. Well, it could be, but I don't think it will be. I think that in the small business offerings, United will give uh, Blue Cross a run for its money. I think in the individual offerings, Neighborhood will give them, uh, give them a run for their money. And when we join, as we have done outside the exchange, I think we will offer fresh alternatives. We are the number one quality uh, rated plan in Rhode Island. There's a national organization that rates health insurance plans for the highest quality, both in the care you receive and in the customer service. Uh, you receive, and of the four plans in Rhode Island, uh, Tufts Health Plan is number one. All right, we have to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk much more with Jim Roosevelt about Tufts Health Plan in Rhode Island, the future of healthcare here, and maybe a little about his grandfather, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. <laughs> Stick with us on Executive Suite.
Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and this week I'm very pleased to be joined by the president and CEO of Tufts Health Plan, which is based up in uh, Watertown, I believe, in Watertown, Massachusetts, Jim Roosevelt, James Roosevelt Jr. And uh, Jim, Tufts came into the round market in 2009. Um, you know, you don't think of much ever changing in the insurance marketplace, especially in Rhode Island where we have so few options. Why was that decision made for Tufts to come into the Rhode Island market in 09? Well, you've just highlighted one reason, because there are so few options. So that we looked around at possible places for expansion. We looked at other New England states. And because there are so few options in Rhode Island, and yet a substantial population, uh, over a million in population, we thought that an additional choice would be useful in Rhode Island. And we've been pleased with that decision. Uh, we're on our strategic plan in terms of how you grow in Rhode Island. When you, when you come into a new market, particularly in health insurance, but I think it's true even if you're a car dealer, uh, uh, if you don't uh, come in as a partner with somebody who's already there, you know it's going to be a gradual build. We're at about 27,000 members in Rhode Island now, which is a good substantial uh, base. We have uh, plans and bids to grow more, uh, but we are definitely on track here and definitely committed to staying in Rhode Island. So Tufts isn't pulling people always who is tough. Maybe they'll decide that wasn't worth it. We're leaving, but that doesn't sound like your plan. That is not our plan at all. Uh, we are very committed to bringing a, di a different option in two senses. One is, as I mentioned earlier, a higher quality option in terms of the offering of health insurance. And the other is more uh, creativity in the design of health plans. Uh, we have experience uh, in our uh, plans in Massachusetts in offering a wider array of choices as to uh, what people, how people choose where they get their health care. Is there a, uh, and we're starting to deal with those sorts of options uh, in the coming year. So uh, those are uh, the sorts of things that we can bring to this market and we hope bring not just higher quality, but lower cost as well. Now I know uh, viewers who uh, work for Blue Cross are going to think I'm picking on Blue Cross. I'm not trying to. It's, it's a testament to their, uh, their uh, dominance in this market that they keep coming up. But, you know, we have seen uh, in Woonsocket, where Landmark Medical Center has been under pressure for a long time, there's been some real um, heated rhetoric going back and forth about Blue Cross and uh, lifespan sort of, uh, uh, sort of working together to try to control the market. I'm not asking you way on that, but how hard was it for Tufts to to reach um, you know uh, agreements with the providers down here in Rhode Island as coming in as the newbie on the block, and also to to get prices that can make it affordable to do that here? We've actually had good relationships with providers uh, as we've uh, as we've come into the market and been able to build uh, a network that really has. Uh, the same breath as uh, as the existing insurance companies here. Uh, we have seen some of the competitive things that you would see. We uh, uh, we had uh, a situation here where we had a client for a year, and Blue Cross came in and uh, showed them why they thought they ought to go back to Blue Cross. <laughs> that happens. That's American capitalism, American competitiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we don't, you know, we didn't. Uh, go, you know, crying to anybody about that. Uh, we're going to win the next one, uh, and, and hopefully we'll win that one back. So that's why you don't uh, you don't just either come in and say, "All right, day one, I'd better have a quarter of the market." If you do that, don't bother in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Blue Cross also has been expressing concern itself about its own financial situation without significant rate increases. They've said their reserves have been dwindling. Uh, I'm curious, how is Tufts' financial position at this point? And do you have to separate out sort of like a bank would, your, your Rhode Island market uh, money and premiums versus your Massachusetts, or is it one corporate entity uh, across the states? So it's one corporate entity. So we do have the, uh, the backing of the very strong reserves uh, of Tufts Health Plan, but your rating pool is done by state. So you do have to look at that. You do have to get fair rates, but you also uh, try to bring, and we at Tufts Health Plan bring very good uh, coordination of health care so that we have had over these four years the lowest uh, trend of cost increases of any of the plans operating in, Mass in uh, Rhode Island, excuse me, actually, uh, Massachusetts too, but, uh, but Rhode Island is what matters uh, in this discussion. Uh, and that's because people are getting the right care in the right place at the right time with the assistance of uh, 
the doctors and nurses that work to help coordinate their care uh, through Tufts Health Plan. Um, on the cost side, you mentioned costs. We've seen a lot of attention lately, um, moving almost moving past blaming insurers for health prices and looking at providers, at doctors and hospitals. You had that big Time Magazine cover story by Steve Brill, Washington Post over the weekend, looking at how the American Medical Association basically writes the prices for a lot of Medicare that insurance are based on. How much it, it, to bring down costs, is it just going to mean we just need to pay providers less? You know, is there a lot of uh, fat in the system? There certainly have been some significant explanatory stories, like the Steve Brill case that shows how charges have no relationship yeah. to either quality or level of service uh, in health care. Uh, the Washington Post uh, series and the New York Times has had uh, a couple of them uh, also on the irrationality of the way pricing is done in hospitals. But part of that is what we do is sort out as when we negotiate contracts with providers, uh, whether they are small financially troubled ones that, as you mentioned uh, in Woonsocket, or whether they are Lifespan or Care New England. Or partners. <laughs> uh, we work with them. We work with them with expertise on both sides to try to get to a reasonable price. Mm -hmm. uh, don't always get exactly where we think uh, we think it should be, but that is part of why people say, you know, what's the role of health plans other than just being a middleman? Well, part of it is people who work with me not only have the expertise, they actually care about negotiating these things with hospitals. Uh, there's a theory out there that if you just put everything up on a website and show people what things cost, people will deal with that themselves. I'll tell you, my friends and neighbors, I mean, they try to be polite about it, but they basically say, we don't want to talk about health insurance. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> we want to have an idea that we're getting a good value, uh, and that's what a great health plan can do for you. All right, we have to take another break. When we come back, we're going to talk a bit more about health care and about Jim Roosevelt's ideas for fixing the Social Security system that his grandfather created. Stick with us on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and my guest is the president and CEO of Tufts Health Plan, Jim Roosevelt, James Roosevelt Jr., to give you your yeah. full uh, honorific there. Yeah. Um, quick one for you. Uh, I had someone ask on Twitter, actually, it's someone who has uh, his business, uh, fewer than 50 employees, he said, and they have Tufts Health Plan. How much do you think it's going to go up uh, the next time they get their renewal? So we're looking about at a basic increase in the costs of health care. Uh, which is what's directly reflected in the premium because between 85 and 90 percent of every premium goes right out to doctors and hospitals uh, of somewhere in six to eight percent uh, around six to eight percent however there will be an increase because of the requirements of the Affordable Care Act uh, and that's probably around another four percent uh, so uh, you could be looking at a, uh, a 10 to 12 uh, percent increase uh, that's an average. There are people who will see much less than that and people who will see much more than that as with any average. Um, you know, Rhode Island is the only state in the country with a health insurance commissioner. Many places have an insurance commissioner, but we're the only one with a health insurance commissioner. Um, previous one, Chris Kohler, he is out now and Kathleen Hittner is coming in, taking over, former Lifespan executive who's actually been on this show. Um, what's been your experience in Tufts playing with this sort of unique way of running the health insurance system to have rates set by a commissioner? How, how, what have you thought of it? Well. Rhode Island does more in terms of actually setting rates than Massachusetts does, for example, and Massachusetts does more than most other states. So this is quite a different experience, having this level of having to get every rate approved uh, here in, uh, in Rhode Island. Uh, I think Chris Kohler did a great job in focusing on the right things, focusing on the underlying costs, focusing on trying to move the healthcare system to paying for outcomes and wellness instead of for just doing more procedures and so on. So I think we've got a very good base to work from. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Dr. Hittner uh, will bring a, her own approach to it and uh, we look forward to working with her. People uh, mentioned earlier your grandfather was FDR, President, President Roosevelt. Um, first of all, people wonder, were you, did you ever meet him? Were you alive when he was so, alive? So in fact, he passed away before I was born. I got to know my grandmother 
growing up. She lived till I was a senior Eleanor in high school. Eleanor Roosevelt, yes, exactly. of course. Yeah. So she lived till I was a senior in high school. So I really knew him through the stories I heard from her and from my parents. And one of the ways uh, you've sort of uh, caught on with your family legacy is a so focus on Social Security. You've been very involved in that. You had a Boston Globe op-ed um, about how to fix Social Security, a big debate. What's your broad vision? We don't have too much time left on what could be done to shore up the Social Security system. Well, I was Associate Commissioner of Social Security in the Clinton administration, Associate Commissioner for Retirement Policy, which really means planning for the future of the program. And the future of the program is very bright. Uh, if we did nothing, there would be about a 23% cut in benefits in year 2033. So we have a little time. We have some time to do uh, some changes in benefits and some changes in revenue. For example, uh, we used to collect uh, Social Security taxes on about 80% of all wages in the country. Because the higher end of wages has gone up faster than the middle or the lower parts of uh, the economy, we now only collect about 80%. We ought to fix that. We ought to go back to collecting uh, Social Security tax on 90 or maybe even 95% uh, of all wages paid in the economy. That would take care of, it's only a 2% shortfall, actually. 2% of gross domestic 2 product. 2% of uh, all wages in the country, mm -hmm. basically. And uh, so we can fix about half of that on the revenue side. The other half, you can look at things like retirement age, which you really only, sh we're already raising it to 67 under current law over the next 10 years. Uh, you can look at, by that time we'll be ready to raise it to 68. My answer to that is, yes, if we have a better disability system for people who can't climb buildings doing construction mm -hmm. at the age of 66, mm -hmm. or who can't run after kids in daycare at the age of 66, uh, something like that. Uh, we should look at some other things. Some states uh, don't have their state and municipal employees. Uh, in uh, Social Security. Half the teachers in Rhode Island, I believe, aren't in Social Security. And my belief is they all ought to be in because in today's economy, you want a retirement and disability and survivor's insurance program, which is what Social Security is. It's not a savings account. You need that too. Uh, and indeed, I wrote that op-ed together with the head of, uh, of Putnam Investments, who's a Reagan Republican, and we came to an agreement on things that would make savings more attractive and Social Security more secure. Uh, uh, and that's not the only way that we, uh, what we came up with is not the only way, but it, we just wanted to show you can do it. Uh, so people have to have more savings, but they also sh should be able to count on Social Security not as an investment program, but as an insurance plan, which is what it is. Um, we only have about 30 seconds left, but I have to ask, you yourself are uh, around retirement age without giving too much away. Could you see yourself staying in this job at Tufts for a while yet, or how are you feeling about that? I uh, am not thinking about retirement, actually. No. <laughs> Other, I'm saving for it. Good, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, I'm not, uh, but I'm not contemplating retirement. I'm planning on uh, working to bring people uh, better and more affordable uh, health insurance for quite a few years to come. But it's not because you're worried Social Security is going to disappear? Not in the least. No. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> right. Jim Roosevelt, thank you so much for being here from Tufts Health Plan. I want to definitely have you back, and we'll be watching to see the uh, new products you're going to bring on to Health Source RI, the exchange. If you want to learn more about uh, how Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, whatever you call it, is being implemented around, we have a lot of information on our website at WPRI.com. And if you ever miss any episode of Executive Suite or you miss the first part of this one, that's on there too. Just go to WPRI. PRI.com. And I'll see you next week here on Executive Suite.